Okay, layoffs push down the scores on Glassdoor. This is how companies respond. Several tech companies face a fresh problem after cutting jobs. Their ratings on Glassdoor no di nosedives. Let's go, Netflix. You know, I work at Netflix. By, by the way, I work at Netflix. I don't know if you know this, but I... I work at Netflix, and we pretty much have laid off nobody. You know why? Because Netflix is a great ran company. Shazam. Um, but there's a way to uh, manage to fix this. And I'll show the companies are doing and why. Okay, okay. Hi. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's go down here. Let's see. I got a message from a software engineer working at a company which laid off 30% of its staff in 2020. Dude, how many? Okay, type one in the chat if you've been laid off in the last two months. Watch this. This is crazy. This is crazy right here. Like, there's been a lot of people... That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot to me. How about this one? Laid off in the last six months, type 69 in the chat. 69 in the chat, if you've been laid off in the last six months. Like, that's a lot of 69. You survived a layoff? Yeah, it's, it's still, it's crazy, right? And I, hey, I'm sorry for everyone that's been laid off. Honestly, that's tough. Type 69 if you're a... Uh, wait, what? <laughs> Shut up, TJ. Uh, I, I don't know about off. Oh, damn. All right, anyways. I see. It's a late-stage startup valued at around $3 billion, which had around 1,000 employees before the layoff. The engineer wrote, my, uh, my company is removing Glassdoor reviews because their rating has gotten so low. The company score went from a 2.3, and they started... Let's see. And they started doing this. I don't think my company is alone in this practice to protect themselves from bad press, but a lots of my colleagues had had their reviews deleted. Effectively, we've been silenced. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. People are review bombing companies because of being laid off. Huh. Do you think it's better or worse than the Rings of Power review bombing? Which one do you think is worse? Rings of Power review bombing, Cleopatra review bombing, or Glassdoor layoff review bombing. Which one do you think is probably the probably the worst one? This is worse. Okay, this is this is probably the worst one. Well, here here's the one about Rings of Power that made it so yucky. On Amazon Prime, Amazon just took off the rating. Rings of Power was so review bombed that Amazon specially programmed Rings of Power to have no review. Like that, like, I mean, just blatant lying. Like, that's how bad it was. Just blatant. <laughs> it's just so awful. The HR team's target was to get their score above 3.0. And so they got to work flagging negative reviews for removal and encouraging staff to post five-star reviews to balance out negative reviews. Turns out this company is not alone in doing so. Uh, in today's issue, uh, we'll look closely at what is happening and also investigate a specific company, cybersecurity company Trustwave. Oh, I, I really hope Trustwave is doing untrustworthy stuff. Nothing is more like 1984 irony funny is when companies – I have this theory, by the way, that the more words a company uses to describe itself, the more opposite it is to those words. Or – and this is also with governments. Anything. If you have to say – that you're a trustworthy company, it makes me think you're untrustworthy. Uh, to find out what happened, uh, let's see. Uh, so the company had reached an all-time high glass score rate, uh, glass door, glass ceiling, glass door rating. Uh, here, I think you can just say continue reading. So what happened here? Look at that. Look at that graph. Look at that. They did something. They went down. And Shazam! Trust! <laughs> trust is just accelerating. Look at the trust go. Look at the, tr look at the, it, uh, that's, uh, why can't my stonks look like this? I want my stonks to look like this. Some tech companies are in Glassdoor's crisis management mode after layoffs. I've talked with CTOs and HR professionals at five tech companies who all tell me they're doing something similar to having set a target score to improve to, or did so in the past. I'm not naming these companies as I believe this is uh, a widespread trend that's not limited to just a few players. And to be clear, Trustwave is not in this group. I do not have information of such uh, mandates at the company. Also, there is business sense in doing this for reputational reasons. But first, let's talk about what they are doing and whether it's fair. So I, I do want to say something. Real talk. Who the hell gives a review at a company on Glassdoor? Okay, first off, that's already strange to me. Okay, I've, I've, I'm not writing reviews for almost anything. Second off, you pretty much never write a review because you're happy at a place. Right? 
You like never write a review because you're happy. If someone super pisses you off, that's like the only time people write reviews. And so it's kind of like, naturally, if you have a way to review companies, say Glassdoor, like it has to be, like Glassdoor's rating of a company has to be complete nonsense. Like it, it can't even mean anything because of the motivation problem, right? Like it just seems crazy. You write good, good, uh, good reviews on Grubhub sometimes? It, well, that's nice. Very few people are good reviewers. Most people are, I review when it's shitty. And so it's like, for me, it's just impossible. Like, it's impossible to know if something is good based on, a, on, on user, on ex-employee feedback of a company. Some ba data is better than no data? I disagree. Bad data or bias data is worse than no data. The reason why bad data or bias data is worse than no data is that it sends the wrong message. If you have no message, you have no idea. If you have bad data, you make the wrong decision, right? At least with no data, you can coin toss a decision. You're at least right more often. Like bad data is the worst. Bad data is by far the single worst thing ever for any decision you make because it's a lie. Like, I hate that. Like, at Netflix, I recently had some data problems recently with the stuff I'm working on. And I'm looking at data right now. And I have no idea if the data I'm getting is data that is good or data that is flawed. I'm trying so hard to figure out, Ed, do I see a bug that I need to report? Or is it simply a loss of data? It is extremely hard. And it is extremely frustrating, bad data. Bad data is the worst. Uh, the Glassdoor site makes it very clear companies cannot remove reviews. On every Glassdoor review page, there is this message. Okay, companies cannot do that. Well, this statement is somewhat inaccurate, as Glassdoor does remove some reviews. I've talked to several HR folks whose mandate was to remove unfavorable reviews. This is possible, and here's how it works. Game the system, boys! <laughs> Glassdoor will, rem will remove reviews that violate its community guidelines or terms of use. Employers can red flag reviews and Glassdoor does all removals at its sole discretion and shares no details on why they decided to remove a review. There is no appeals from employers. Users uh, whose reviews are removed are not notified. I asked Glassdoor for a comment on this fact. The company responded with a generic statement that did not answer why they don't notify users when taking down the reviews. Great example. Of See, this is like... I like this stuff is the actual worst, right? This is the whole like, you know, YouTube just bans people and they just give you generic statements. Like we did it because you violated our terms of use. And you're like, well, what was it? And they're just like, we did it because you violated our terms of use. Like I hate this type of stuff. Like if you can't directly point to something, then it totally sucks. And so I understand that they're a private company and that we should all let private companies do private company things. But at the same time, they're influencing public. And they can totally make some companies look better than other companies. You don't know what kind of behind the doors handshaking that goes on, right? You don't know what's actually going on. You don't, you know? I'm going to go rumble. We're going rumble, boys. I don't. I honestly have never been to rumble. Uh, so that's, I mean, the behind the glass door, right? You don't actually know what's happening. And that's the hardest part about these type of decisions is that my, like in my head, I like to pretend that what they're doing is they're actually just trying to do a good job. But we know for a fact that anytime there's power, decision-making, and money, that intersection point always has the possibility of becoming corrupt, right? So there's a corrupt incentive here to do things for certain people, not for others. Uh, paying customers seem to get priority in action on flagged reviews. Although, ooh, ooh, although any company can flag reviews to be removed, an HR person told me that their experienced Glassdoor uh, takes no action until the company is a Glassdoor customer. Huh, it's almost like the intersection of power and money breeds corruption. Uh, that's, why, that's why my stream's uncorrupt, because there's just... <laughs> <laughs> got him i haven't taken a, I, I i real talk i have been thinking about taking a sponsor real talk what would you guys think if i took a coffee sponsor right because guess what remember you know like how there's there's talk about like can people actually have tech sponsors and be you know objective well, what happened if i just took a coffee sponsor okay then i can recommend whatever the whatever the f want for
for, co for, for tech, and you can't argue that I'm biased, but I just have coffee. I'm like, yo, buy my coffee, bitch. Right? Like, that's totally different. Uh, you know, I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, uh, non-tech sponsors are would be great. I am sponsored by this keyboard, but to be fair, I've been using this keyboard for a decade, practically, and been sponsored for a couple years, right? Very, very different, I feel like. Uh, even if they took away my sponsorship, I'd still use them. <laughs> coffee often uh, uses slave labor. Yeah, well, exactly. You'd want to find out what the good coffee is. Like, I would actually want to do some good ones. Uh, I have a couple that I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to try to make it work out. It'd be great, but we'll see. I have no idea. Um, anyways, there is no, let's see, hold on. I want to, I want to, I want to actually go on this one. Uh, but real talk, I've been thinking about it really hard lately and that's kind of where I'm coming. Network Chuck Coffee. So yeah, Network Chuck Coffee is one of the people I'm currently talking to right now. I have never tried the coffee. I asked for, I want to know, I, I want to know what it tastes like. I want to understand what it is. Make sure I really like it. Yerba Mate. I actually did reach out to Guayaki. Guayaki said they just don't do sponsorships. I would have done a Yerba Mate sponsorship, hands down. Black Rifle and Rust Stream. Oh, just rustle some jimmies. That's just called a Jimmy rustling stream. That all that is. If I did Black Rifle and Rust, they'd be like, <laughs> like the the Rust Foundation would literally melt in half. <laughs> It'd be fun. I mean, I would do that just to troll Rust Foundation, like purely to troll Rust Foundation. I would do that. You hear that, Black Rifle? You want a Black Rifle and Rust? Stream, you let me know, okay? We can rustle some jimmies together. <laughs> oh, real talk, though, my cousin is a uh, war vet in uh, Afghanistan, uh, Restrepo. Uh, he was in this movie called Restrepo. Uh, this unit saw the most firefights in Afghanistan. He was in there. He's in the show. Uh, he talks about the ranch that we both uh, spent some time growing up on. Great guy. Love my cousin. Um, Good. He's not on this list, so this is good. I don't want him because he wasn't one of the main characters in this. But nonetheless, uh, I, I bought Black Rifle stuff purely to support vets because, like, it is rough out there for them. They have no support. And so that's why uh, that's why just to rustle Jimmy's, I'd have no problem doing it. But nonetheless, man, I still look back at those days. Like, I feel genuinely bad. I, I love my cousin. I think he's a great guy. And, man, the stuff that he had to go through... <sighs> It, like, hurts me to know what he had to go through, you know? And I barely know anything. Like, I barely know anything, you know? It, it like, you know, thoughts with that. Yeah, sad times, man, sad times. Anyways, let's, we can keep on going. Sorry for the complete, like, I don't even know how I got here. Okay, we were talking about coffee and we got here. Uh, what repo? Is it Restrepo? It's Restrepo. It's not Rest Repo. I called it Rest Repo to begin with, but it's Restrepo. Doc Restrepo, right? Uh, the person's company flagged reviews that were very clearly in violation, but Glassdoor only took a review down when the company started paying. Glassdoor responded and said they allow non-paying employees or employers to flag reviews, but the company did not say if they treat non-paying employees with the same priority as paying ones. In all fairness, doing so would make no business sense. Yep. Again, you know. Uh, there is no way to pressure Glassdoor to remove any single review. However, a chief people officer, I hate this title. I hate chief people officers. It's such a stupid term. Uh, who has worked at tech firms for more than 10 years told me their success rate for removing reviews is about one in three. This person said that their experience rude and abusive reviews can be successfully challenged. Otherwise, Glassdoor won't budge. Um, Glassdoor is pretty good at reducing spamming. Uh, the same chief people officer said that they are satisfied with how well Glassdoor removed spam or fake reviews. Spamming a copy pasta style review is a common problem and they do not, uh, do not feel Glassdoor take a backseat in battling this. Okay. The most common way to get a review removed is for a company to claim that it violates Glassdoor's terms and service. An HR professional who used to be tasked by, with removing as many reviews as possible told me the most common method is to flag a review for one or both of the following reasons. Impersonating another person. That makes sense. That seems like an easy win right there. Employers frequently uh, flag reviews claiming what the review was said uh, by an imposter or impersonator pretending to be a staff member. Should Glassdoor agree, it will ask the reviewer to prove that they are currently an employee and that will hide the review until this happens. Naturally, some employees will not want to identify themselves, even to Glassdoor. Defamatory, libelous, fraudulent, or knowingly misleading con content. Ooh, see, like, this is like, this is where things like knowingly misleading. Like, that's going to be hard, right? Because that's like such an individual basis kind of thing. You know what I mean? This is such 
an individual type thing. Rest, Restrepo used to be on there, right? Because let's just say you're a big company, Netflix, right? And at Netflix, we have hundreds of a hundred managers, hundreds of managers. I have no idea. So you can imagine that there's teams that are amazing at Netflix. And there's teams that are probably not amazing at Netflix. I mean, managers make teams, right? Like we all know this, that a good manager makes a good team and a bad manager often makes a bad team. Uh, a good manager has so much impact on a, how good a, a team is. And Netflix is extremely discretionary with like their, their managers, ha our managers have a huge amount of autonomy. And so you could have someone who has a terrible experience and says management is terrible at Netflix. Is that misleading? Yeah, that's the problem. It's the problem right there. Again, employers can flag content that falls into this category. This could be abused by some employers putting Glassdoor in the position of deciding whether or not they agree with the employee, employer's opinion. Yeah, Glassdoor is in a tricky spot, but it doesn't make the situation easier for itself. Glassdoor is a semi-anonymous site where employees post reviews on the understanding Glassdoor will protect their privacy. The site makes good on this promise. Glassdoor went as far as going to court in 2022 to push back on a toy maker, Zuru, which wanted to know the review reviewer's identities. Unfortunately, the, pri the privacy fans, Zuru won, and U.S. court ordered Glassdoor to disclose this information. So if you leave a review, consider the non-zero chance that a court order could force Glassdoor to reveal your identity, even though it's clear clearly aims to protect this as much as possible. Dang. Thank you, uh, TQ. I appreciate that. TQ Wee Wee, I appreciate that. That's, uh, you know, like, this is actually a kind of terrifying statement. You know what I mean? Kind of a terrifying statement. Uh, imagine the situation where a review claims something and the company tells Glassdoor this is deliberately misleading information. What is Glassdoor to do? It needs to enforce the terms of service, so either it takes the employer at their word and removes the rev this review, or Glassdoor has enough knowledge to know that the employer is incorrect and the information is accurate. However, when a review is in question contains internal company information, Glassdoor will ha not have prior knowledge to fall back on. So it has to remove the review, or else it fails to enforce its own terms of service interesting that's Trixie to be fair the HR worker I talked to said the same the person flagged every single one or two star review and Glassdoor only acted on clearly defamatory or fraudulent ones or ones which violated guidelines Glassdoor could make the process a lot clearer by publishing a moderation log which details when and why it removed a review you know you know it's odd this feels just like the rust we, we just got done going over the whole rust drama this feels just like it. You know what I mean? This is like the same problem. It's always the same problem, right? We just don't have information and people don't make information public. And so it's very easy to assume bad intent, right? Lack of transparency leads to more shadowy cabal assumed behavior. That sucks. Right, because it's it's technically not fair to Glassdoor. Glassdoor could be doing a great job, right? Glassdoor could be trying to do a great job, and that's the worst part is that you could feel like they're they're not. This log only contains uh, redacted parts of the affected reviews to ensure terms of service are not broken. Such a log would build confidence that Glassdoor is a neutral platform which only enforcing its own terms and conditions and could uh, validate this. Wikipedia edit logs or the moderation logs on the programming website Lobster are both examples of bringing transparency to moderation and content editing policy. But Wikipedia also has categorically incorrect things. I have a good buddy, uh, and he was at an event that took place historically. And when he went to it... Uh, this was in Russia, I believe it was in Vladivostok, someone from India had already written up about the event, and it was clearly incorrect in a, a couple places. So he wrote in and said, hey, these things happened, I was there, I sat and I watched this thing happen, and the person took down his edits. Like, that's the problem about Wikipedia, is Wikipedia suffers from the same problem, which is even if it's transparent, it can still be wrong. <laughs> That's the worst part, right? Companies encourage staff to leave more positive reviews in a, uh, is a common way to increase the score. Yeah. So this is like Glassdoor hacking, which I'm not opposed to. It's kind of interesting. It's an interesting. Uh, that's like open source. Yeah. Uh, do I have a problem with this? I'm not sure if I have a problem with this. As long as it's not fully forced by a company, 
if it's forced at the point of a gun, meaning like, I'm going to fire you if you don't do this, then I don't like that. But interesting. Glassdoor itself naturally encourages the company to have more employees uh, add reviews in order to combat negative reviews. In this article, I'm an employ employer. What can I do about negative reviews? The company outlines four steps. Flag reviews. Okay. Uh, respond to them. Responses are shown under the review. Nice. That's actually a good way to do it. I think a company would look best as responses versus getting them taken down because then you can see how the company responds under pressure. I think that'd be good. Uh, post more reviews. Yep. Interesting. Take legal action. Uh, this is always a possibility, but is the most time consuming and probably cost assuming uh, approach and outcome of legal proceedings is uncertain. Yep. I've talked with several CTOs and HR professionals who told me their companies encourage employees to post reviews in various ways. Send a reminder to new joiners during the first month, uh, asking them to leave a review on Glassdoor. This is the smart approach. I like this approach as new joiners are often in their honeymoon period and are likely to leave a positive review. Uh, Remind managers of the importance of Glassdoor reviews when hiring staff and ask them to consider sharing their experience on the site. Again, smart as managers tend to sell the company anyways and are likely to share positive things. Okay, organize a Glassdoor review event, asking employees to leave honest reviews. I always get asked in YouTube comments, what do you mean music? Clearly there's good music here. Anyways, this is interesting. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want to keep reading. I get the idea. I don't feel like uh, I, I want any more, uh, any more information about this, but this was fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. That was a great article. And it's kind of really thought-provoking of... I mean, I think the, the biggest thing you should take away from this is that reviews about companies are really difficult. Real talk. I think the best thing you can do, if you want to know about a company, find someone that works there and ask them questions. Right? Real talk. Find people that work there, ask them questions. That's going to be your best way to know what a company's like. There is no, there is no other way because again, reviews are largely motivated uh, by some sort of external bias, right? Like I, I got, I got fired, therefore I'm going to leave a mean review. That's not going to tell you if the company's good or bad. You're just going to get this crappy one. What's Netflix like? I love Netflix. Netflix is great. In fact, we just hired a new person, and I had a little one-on-one -on -one with him, and he was just asking me about things as, as kind of trying to up level his JavaScript chops because he's going to be working on a JavaScript library. Uh, and so I was like, all right, I really want you to understand some things. So we kind of did. We walked through it, and afterwards he was just like, you know, no one's really told me what to do. They just told me to go and and work on stuff what do I do? And so I gave him the Netflix talk, which is freedom and responsibility, baby. This is where you need to determine what you're going to do to make Netflix better. You need to get out there and you need to come up with a game plan. That's what we all do. And you need to do that too. And you've obviously been tasked to work on specifically this product. So why don't you go and figure that out? And you know, here's the problem with Netflix is they give you a lot of rope for freedom, right? You're running around. Freedom is amazing. But they also give you enough rope to hang yourself. And it's not for everybody, right? This type of this type of management, this type of company is not for everyone, right? That's how Jay Diesel started. That's the problem. This It's true. This is how Jay Diesel starts, uh, which is you get enough rope to have an amazing time, but you also get enough rope to hang yourself. And so you got to know how, how to like do a good job. And so it's, it's not easy. It can definitely not be for everybody. There's plenty of people that hates. Uh, and then they pre-tie the noose. Yep, that could be tricky. That, that's a tricky one when they give you a lot of rope and pre-tie the noose. Uh, freedom can destroy. Oh, I wouldn't say freedom can destroy. I'd say that some people thrive in freedom. Some people need to be told what to do. Uh, I've always been someone who thrives when you say, figure this out. I need us to be able to debug what's happening in production. Figure it out. Like literally that was, so five years ago when we, or seven years ago when we started to do originals really heavy at Netflix, um, uh, my boss came to me and said, hey, we're really struggling with images in production. We have 10 different languages. We have no idea how any of them, like, uh, we have no idea how the images are actually, like, e e if they're even present for our originals. We don't even know anything. Can you just make something for us to figure out if we have images in production or not? That's all I'm asking. So I figured that out. It was fun. I came up with an entire system, uh, and the entire system is now used all over the place at Netflix. It's, fa it's fantastic. It's fun. Right. And so that was just like an example of responsibility. Right. There's still direction. Right. The freedom is like or 
the freedom is in the sense of we're going to give you a large problem. You figure out the large problem. I don't need to tell you how to do it. I don't need to say like, hey, you need to do it this way. You need to use this technology. You need to talk with this team. You need to be with this person. You, you get Tom on the line, and Tom figures it out. Everybody knows that because Tom is a genius. Uh, do you have any tips to find companies that work like Netflix? No, I don't. I, I fell into Netflix by a complete accident. You know, like people always, there's a lot of people that anytime you say you've had a success in life, they go, oh, yeah, but that's luck. It's lucky that someone at Netflix asked me to, to interview, right? That was the lucky part. I got, I got the chance to take an interview. And so very happy about it, right? Uh, do you have mentorship program in, in Netflix? No, uh, we don't have any mentorship at Netflix, none at all. Um, none that I really think is good. At least there, there's been some attempts at it. I'm not quite sure if it's really good because a lot of it is geared towards making uh, software engineers into management. And so that does it. That's not quite mentorship. That's more like career coaching. I agree. Uh, it was lucky that someone at Netflix knew you. No one yeah, agreed. It was lucky. No one knew me. I was all about my lonesome. I was from Montana. Uh, mentorship is really hard at companies. So I try to, I do try to mentor people at Netflix. And so now that we have this new hire that is our, our first non-senior engineer on our team. So we only have senior and staff level engineers on our team. And so since this is the first person not on there and he doesn't work with anything with me, I just literally go and I make meetings with him and just chat with him about stuff. That's it. So that's like being a good mentor, right? I, I, you know, I can't read. Okay, I'm gonna turn back on the alerts. Hey, the name is the Primogen.